Welcome to CRE Fast Five, where we detail hot topics in commercial real estate in five minutes or less. I'm Carly Ayakono, and tonight we are talking about the repositioning of big box retail. If you missed last week's episode on retail bankruptcies, that would be a good place to start. So there have been a lot of high profile closures and bankruptcies announced. JCPenney's, Macy's, Toys R Us, Models, Sports Authorities, Earth Fair, etc. A lot of these are big box tenants and big box is loosely defined as anything over 50,000 square feet and it gets its name because of the traditional bland box shape. So if you are facing a vacancy of a big box tenant as an investor, what do you do? The first thought is usually a retail to retail use and this is a good place to start. There are some retail big box tenants who are expanding and that would be Hobby Lobby, which is expected to open 55 stores in 2020. Costco is slated to open six. Target is expected to open 20. Walmart expects to open 77 new stores in 2020, and they have a variety of different uh, formats. So their square footage does vary depending on what um, design they're trying to put into that specific market. So there are some very strong tenants in the market who are expanding. And if you're able to secure one of those tenants, most likely you're looking at a credit or upgrade of your asset overall. So that could be a very, very good thing for you. Let me give you some real world examples. There is a Toys R Us vacant single tenant box in Paramus, New Jersey, right outside Manhattan in my part of the world that was taken over by Ray Moore and Flanagan. And they did a beautiful job on the renovation of the space, was definitely an upgrade for the investor. Burlington took over a Toys R Us box in Somerset County, New Jersey recently, and Hobby Lobby took over a Toys R Us box in Pasadena, Texas. So three examples right there of how these have been repositioned. Now, if retail to retail is not working out, maybe there's not enough demand for your asset. Another thing to consider is retail to healthcare. This is very much an emerging part of the market, really hasn't been done all that much, but I do think we're gonna see more and more of it. Right now, only about 10% of all shopping centers in the United States have some sort of healthcare focused tenant. Now, interestingly, that is a 47% jump from just three years ago. So although we don't have a huge market penetration right now of healthcare and retail centers, it is growing and will continue to do so. Now note that a lot of those healthcare uses are smaller square footage. Maybe it's a dentist office, a doctor's office, an urgent care. They may not need 50,000 square feet or they most likely will not need 50,000 square feet. But there are some examples of larger format healthcare uses going into retail centers in fact, there is a sports authority in Chicago, which was taken over by an outpatient clinic related to a local hospital system. So if your asset is in a more urban area, you have really strong demographics, or maybe you're near a hospital system that's looking to expand, partnering up can be a great way to drive traffic to your center. And as healthcare becomes more commercialized and consumers demand convenience, those retail places are usually much better positioned than other healthcare uses. So it could be very attractive as sort of the mentality on healthcare continues to shift and consumers want convenience, they want walk-in, they want longer hours, etc. could fit very nicely with a retail format. The third thing to consider is retail to housing. Now, again, you have some zoning issues here that can make it a bit complicated, but it is being done. There's a vacant Sears in Maryland, which is being converted to 800 multifamily units. Garden State Plaza here in New Jersey is adding a multifamily component as well. So again, this is going to be market by market, but there is a tremendous demand for apartments in most, I would say class A, maybe class B markets. Um, so if that is the case and you can work through the approvals and the zoning, that can be a great way to boost value and NOI for your retail property. The third thing we're seeing done a lot is retail to industrial. Obviously industrial is on fire, a lot of expansion happening, and there's really two ways that this presents itself in the retail space. The first is an omni-channel retailer who already has a lease and already has a presence in a shopping center 
whatever size center that might be, they are sometimes taking that location if they no longer want it to be a full big box location, maybe it's a department store or something like that, and they're using it for last mile distribution for e-commerce. Now, I've seen this both with the entire square footage being taken over and then also just part of it. So their retail concept is being downsized and then their last mile distribution kind of backfills the unnecessary square footage. So you might be able to work with your existing tenant and just kind of switch the use of their existing space. If that doesn't work or you don't have an omni-channel retailer knocking at your door, we have seen some straight retail to industrial conversions. There is a Sam's Club in Connecticut right now that is being converted to a multi-tenant uh, multi warehouse and light manufacturing facility. So a complete shift in the use of that project. Uh, and again, if you can get this through approvals, this could be a big upgrade in long-term stability for your project. So when you hear vacancy, don't think necessarily that everything is um, all doom and gloom. Often this could be a wonderful time to reposition your asset and upgrade the credit and long-term stability of your asset. That was Siri Fast Five. I'm Carly Iacono. I look forward to seeing you again soon.